Welcome to the Here's My Story channel. I'm Sienna. I was so hungry because I hadn't eaten anything since the morning, but I didn't have money for the bus, so I had to walk home from school. It meant that the earliest I could eat was two hours from now. When I got home, I was dizzy with hunger. I walked straight to the kitchen. But what was that? The kitchen door had a padlock on it. Disappointed, I headed towards my room. There, I had another unpleasant surprise waiting for me. I turned on the switch, but the light didn't go on. This was a little too much. I ran to my dad's study. My dad was ironing his dollar bills as he did every night. Some people like money. My dad worships it. He owns a car wash. He brings all the money he makes straight home and irons each bill carefully. Then he puts all the money in the big safe in his study. He never deposits any of his money in the bank because he wants to be able to see and touch it whenever he wants. Dad, the kitchen door is locked and my room is dark. You can't do this to me because I'm late with my payment. I'm your daughter, I screamed. He looked at me condescendingly. If you want to live in this house, you must pay $1,500 a month. Dad, can you be a little more understanding? I hardly make anything because I can only work part-time, I told him. He began to place all the bills he had ironed into the safe. Then get a full-time job. Since you don't have the money, you won't be going to college anyway. Why do you have to finish high school? At that moment, my stepmom Olivia walked in and put the money she had in her hand on the table. She said, this is Sienna's monthly payment. Give her the keys to the kitchen so the poor girl can get something to eat. Seeing the money made my dad's eyes light up. He grabbed it and began counting. Then he fished the key out of his pocket and handed it to Olivia. In the kitchen, my stepmom began to make something for me to eat. Thanks for saving my life again, I said to her. It's all I make from waiting tables. I have to give your dad $2,500 every month, so unfortunately I can't support you as much as I want to, she replied sadly. You're doing your best. Also, as a stepmother, aren't you supposed to treat me badly? I said, <laughs> giggling. Olivia put the plate she had made for me on the table. She said, thanks for reminding me. If you leave one crumb on that plate, I'll lock you up in your dad's study. You'll have to iron bills all night. We both <laughs> laughed out loud. My mom died when I was very young. Olivia raised me. She is my mother, but she didn't want me to call her that. She'd say, you already have a mother. If you also called me mom, that would disrespect her memory. The following day, I jumped out of bed when the alarm went off. One of my part-time jobs was dog walking. I had to wake up early for that. Olivia was an amateur painter. She had painted my portrait as a present on my 16th birthday. I looked at the painting on the wall as I did every morning and said, Good morning, how are you feeling today? To which I replied, Perfect, you couldn't feel better than this. I should have felt pretty sad after what my dad said last night, but I felt amazing because I had the best stepmom in the world, which made me feel so lucky. I came back home after walking the dog and I got ready for school. Olivia said, I wanted to drop you off at school, but there's something wrong with the car's brakes. I'd better pay a visit to the shop. She kissed me and left. I spent the day at school looking at part-time job listings online. Olivia wasn't there when I got home. I was surprised because she's usually home before me. I called her to find out where she was. Her phone was off. I called the restaurant where she worked. Her colleague said, Honey, don't you know? Olivia had a terrible car accident on her way to work this morning. I was shocked. I found out which hospital she was at and rushed over. I saw my dad as I was going in. He was leaving the hospital. I asked, Where are you going, Dad? He said, Home. Your stepmother is in intensive care. There's nothing we can do for her here. I've got things to do back home. I replied, Are you going to leave her like this to go home and iron your bills? Without saying a word, he looked at me, annoyed, and left. I had to get information about how Olivia was doing. I found her doctor and introduced myself. We are going to release your stepmother from intensive care tomorrow, but she was stuck in the vehicle during the accident. That's why her legs were badly injured. Unfortunately, she won't be able to walk, he said, looking sad. That's horrible news. Isn't there anything we can do about it? I'm begging you, please help her, I said, bursting into tears. The doctor shrugged. The nerves in her legs must be repaired to walk again. I told your father that special surgeons could do this kind of surgery, but he said he couldn't afford such an expensive procedure. I had to talk to my dad right away. When I got home, I found him ironing his bills. Dad, you have to pay for Olivia's surgery. She's your wife. Please, at least lend her the money, I begged. 
He replied, Olivia wouldn't be able to pay me back for a hundred years. I can't throw that kind of money away. I felt so desperate. I thought about what I could do all night. I barely fell asleep before the sun came up. Suddenly, I woke up. I was dreaming of my mom. I forced myself to remember the details of the dream. My mom said to me, I never visited you before because you have a wonderful mother. Olivia is a wonderful person. You should look at yourself more carefully if you want to help her. Right at that second, I woke up. What did mom mean by look at yourself more carefully? I began to get ready to go to the hospital while I was thinking about the things my mom had said to me. As I was leaving my room, I locked eyes with my portrait. How are you doing? I asked, as always. This time, my answer was, terrible. I couldn't feel worse. At that moment, a light bulb went off in my head. I looked at the picture again. It was me. Did mom mean this painting when she said, look at yourself more carefully? I looked at the painting more carefully, but nothing was particularly grabbing my attention. I removed it from the wall and looked closer. I turned the canvas around. There was something there. A piece of paper. It was a document that looked quite old. There was also a note behind the canvas. I took it out. At the top, it said, In Congress, July 4th, 1776. I didn't understand what it meant. Then I read the note. My dear daughter Sienna, 16 is an exceptional age. Did you think your portrait was the only gift I had for you on your 16th birthday? Of course not. This document is an original copy of the Declaration of Independence. It's a family heirloom. My dad always said this was worth at least $100,000. I hope it is. I will reveal my surprise once you finish high school. We will sell it so you can go to college. Your loving stepmom, Olivia. This was incredible. I looked the document up online right away. There were only 201 copies of it. It wasn't worth $100,000, but so much more. Last year, a copy of the Declaration of Independence sold for $2 million. I found the auction house where the sale took place. I left home right away. I was so excited when I got there. The people who looked at the historical document couldn't believe their eyes. They said they could list it in the afternoon sale that day. The copy of the Declaration of Independence made a big splash at the auction. After a bidding war, it sold for a whopping $3 million. They took out the auction house's commission and taxes and deposited $2 million into my bank account. I had enough money for my stepmom's operation now. I talked to Olivia's doctor the next day. He said, I'm getting into contact with the specialists now. They're the best in the world. They'll do everything to get your mom walking again. The surgeons managed to fix Olivia's leg nerves after a 14-hour procedure. According to the doctor, it could take days for my stepmom to wake up. I waited for her, not leaving her side. One night, I came across a news story on TV. There was a house in flames on the screen. After the reporter said it was an electrical fire, he pointed to a man and announced, the owner is here with us. I saw my dad on the screen and realized that it was our house on fire. My dad was in tears when he said, all the money I made over the years is burning up right now. I have to get back inside and save my money, but the firefighter stopped me from doing that. Please help me. The next day, Olivia woke up. I said, welcome back, mom. I'm going to call you mom from now on because I'm sure my biological mother would also want that. <laughs> she smiled and hugged me. I told her what had happened. She was shocked to hear the copy of the Declaration of Independence was worth millions of dollars. She said, but that was a gift for you. You shouldn't have spent your money on me. I replied, your surgery only cost $500,000. We have one and a half million dollars left. That's enough for me to go to college and for us to start a new life. Then I told her what had happened to my dad. I'm going to file for divorce as soon as I recover, she said, even though it made her very sad. The auction house announced the story of the sale in a press bulletin. My dad found out about it when the story broke. That same day, he came to the hospital. He said, My dear family, my dear wife, Olivia, my dear daughter, Sienna, I missed you both so much. Unfortunately, our house burned down, but thanks to you, we can buy a new one. Olivia said that was impossible because she was going to divorce him. Then my dad showed his true colors. He yelled, I'm your husband. Half of that money is illegally mine. I'll see you in court. 
She replied, but it wasn't me who sold the document. Sienna did. You can't take a penny from her. When he heard this, my dad began begging us again. But of course, that didn't work. My mom was discharged from the hospital last month. We moved to another city. My dad keeps sending us apology texts. I didn't block him because, to be honest, it's good to see him full of regret. <laughs>